I was told to take me right into Latigo. Nope. This is private property. Nobody crosses it without our say-so. Well, in that case, how do I get to Latigo? You don't. Just head back up trail. All right, come on, hurry it up. All right, hurry it up, hurry it up. Slip those guns right back in the holsters, real easy like. Now get down. Take those gun belts and put them over the pummel. Easy. Now come on over here. Do yourself a favor, mister. Head back to Albuquerque. Like I told you, I'm heading for Latigo. Yo. What do you want? Honora Travers? Yes. I'm Clay Culhane. Oh! oh forgive my rudeness, Mr. Culhane. Mr. Addison asked me to tell you again that he's sorry he couldn't personally plead this case for you. It was good of him to recommend you. You work with him? No, ma'am. He just happened to know that I wasn't overly busy. I didn't really expect you'd come. Well, didn't you get my letter? Oh, I had other letters. But the lawyers who wrote them all suddenly got very busy in Santa Fe or Albuquerque. Well, they got discouraged when they heard that the road to Latigo is closed. Are these fellows blocking the road, are they tied in with your need for a lawyer? They're tied in. Well, like I told you in my letter, Mrs. Travis, you're my first client. Getting a chance to prove myself means an awful lot. Now, you won't regret hiring me. Oh, excuse me. You'll want to take your horse to the livery stable, and I'll have Teresa get a room ready. We'll talk later. experience for a man to get that fast. I know your trade. What's your name? Where I grew up, asking a man who he is can be unhealthy. One of the hazards of my job. Your name? Culhane. Clay Culhane. Well, I haven't heard much about the Culhane since that shootout over in Marathon. 
Some of your family was killed. Both my brothers. Seems I heard you crawled off and died, too. Well, as you can see, that story is just a little bit exaggerated. It's been a good while since that trouble in Marathon. What's your business now? I've been reading the law. Oh. Is that a fact? It is. Come to Latigo to hang out your shingle? Well, I don't know about that, but I've got a client. Nora Travis. I've been worried Nora might get desperate enough to bring in a gun. Oh, now look. I Marshall. know. You're a lawyer. Maybe you'd like to see my certificate, Marshal. Wouldn't make any difference, because it doesn't change the kind of man you are, Culhane. When trouble comes, you'll reach for that 45, not your law book. Now, you're not the kind of lawyer this town or Nora Travers needs. You start your practice somewhere else. Now that I've met the town's welcoming committee, I begin to understand why Latigo looks so much like a cemetery. Afternoon. This right in from Albuquerque? That's right. You signed in as Clay Culhane. Clay Culhane? Well, I'm Hannibal Pardee. You must forgive our interest, Mr. Culhane. We don't get many visitors in Latigo. Your friend there sees to that. You mean Moss? He and another man blocked the road north of here. Tried to keep me from riding in. When was that? Oh, about an hour ago. Why, that couldn't have been Moss. He's been with me since sunup. What brings a top gun like you to let it go, Mr. Cohen? He's a lawyer these days. A lawyer? Well, now, Marshal, I never would have guessed that. Looks more like a gunfighter. Which reminds me, Marshal, aren't you forgetting the town law about carrying guns? Any reason why Cohen should be an exception? No reason. Maybe he's about to leave. Maybe just passing through. No, I'm staying. No room in this town for short trigger men, Cohen. Give your guns to the Marshal. More like a lawyer. My regards to your client, though, eh? What is this pardee? Rancher, cattleman, and liar. No town law against that. Teresa? Mrs. Travers? Senor, senor, the marshal, he wishes you to come to his office at once. It's very important. Thank you, Teresa. Me do it. Who, Pardee? No, I do not know his name. Believe me, he said they would beat me 
unless I did as they asked. I was afraid. Get some towels and some warm water, Teresa. All right. Why was I beaten up? I knew I shouldn't have involved you in my trouble. Anyway, it doesn't matter now. I've decided to drop the case. Look, I asked you why I was beaten up out there. Now, I'm going to get an answer to that question from somebody. And I'm going to get it whether you fire me or not. Please sit down, Mr. Colleen. What's going on in Latigo? Hannibal Pardi has killed his son. Why? Because of what happened to his son, Jamie. Six months ago, there was a wedding party in there. Jamie Pardi got drunk, pushed his way in, made insulting remarks to the bride. Her husband asked him to get out, and Jamie went for his gun. And Pardi's boy was killed? Yes. All of us knew Hannibal Party. What he do to the one who killed his Jamie. So, before we sent word to him, we helped that young couple get away. Where was your marshal? Well, Gib was very ill. He had high fever and could hardly lift his head off the pillow. Much less protect anybody from Party. And Party, what did he do? Oh, he gave us 48 hours to tell who'd killed his son. And nobody did. Nobody. Hardy owned a lot of property, and with his money, it was easy to buy more. People were persuaded with cash and in other ways. Not all of them, huh? This hotel and a strip of land I own along the road to town, that's, that's all what's left. So you felt there was a way of fighting Pardee through the law, and now you've decided not to try. Why? Because you don't think I'm good enough to plead your case, is that it? That has nothing to do with it. I'm just tired. Tired of threats, tired of fighting other people's battles. Fighting alone. You're not alone. Look, I, I don't like this party or any man who would turn a whole town into a graveyard. Most of all, I don't like losing my first client. <laughs> Won't you reconsider? You're very persuasive. Uh. If you'll come with me, Mr. Colleen, maybe you'll understand why this isn't an easy decision for me. All right. Clay Colleen? This is my father, Karl Borgen. How do you do, sir? I told him not to send for a lawyer. But you didn't think I could find one who'd come. All right, so Colleen is here. What good will it do you or anybody? Are you really thinking of selling out, sir? I should have done that weeks ago. If the deeds were still in my name, I would have this girl safe in Santa Fe this minute. Then why do you... And I can't take the worry of it. Lying up here and figuring out what he may try next, knowing I can't stop him. Sir, that would be part of my job to see... We don't need you. If she just will be sensible, pay that lawyer off and take Paddy's offer. Papa. Come here, honey. Sit down. Tell me, what's so special about this town? Has it been so good to us? You have lost a husband, and I am crippled for the rest of my life. We are finished. Let's clear out. Leave Latigo to Paddy and the other vultures. Nora, I beg you, take Paddy's money and let him have what he wants. <laughs> You're leaving? Well, I thought that was more or less settled. Last night, I... I thought about it. But I know what Father feels and why he does, but... Mr. Culhain, if I were to change my mind, what would you do? Anything you want me to do. You're still my first client. I won't quit. I can't. Not as 
long as there's anything at all I can do to stop party. Well, I did some thinking myself last night. Just where is this strip of land you own? Oh, it follows the road to town. I can show you on a land office map. A short visit, Colleen. Reckon your job in Vladigo didn't have much future, huh? <laughs> what are you trying, Colleen? I'm heading back to Latigo. Oh, no, you're not. No, I'm on land belonging to Nora Travis. Now, I'm asking you to get out of the way and let me pass. I'll blow your head off what I'll do. Put up your gun. You're under arrest. Take off your gun belts. You ain't got no reason to arrest us. You're guilty of forcible entry and detainer, and the marshal witnessed it. Come on. What are you talking about? This land belongs to Nora Travers. You both know it. And you use violence to prevent Mr. Culhane, her lawyer, from peaceably crossing it. You don't think Pardee's gonna let you get away with this, do you? Oh, he can fight it. In court. Come on, let's go. Your father wants to get out. Carl Haynes has gone. He knows it's finished. Well, I'm not finished. You think going on with this fight is going to stop me? You're wrong. It isn't. You're wasting your time. Even the law is leaving Latigo. Didn't Judd tell you? They've ordered him up to Santa Fe. No point in having a marshal in a ghost town. Well, it isn't dead yet. If it isn't, it will be. As dead as my son. Look, killing this town won't bring him back. What good does it do? I'll tell you what good. The town's life for my boy's life. Boss, the marshal and Culhane just arrested Moss and Zed. They're riding in now. Culhane got a gun? No. Here. Take this one. Get up on the porch roof where you can cover the street. Keep your sights on Carl Hain. When I raise my hat, drop him. I'll take care of the marshal. All right. Stay there until I send for you. I think you better come along. See what's happening. Marshal! What seems to be the trouble? Your men were on Mrs. Travers' land. Trespass, Mr. Pardee. Her land? No doubt about it. Well, I'm sure you thought it was her property, Colleen, but the fact is, Mrs. Travers just sold that land to me. I don't think they believe me. You better tell them. So you sold out, huh? Yes. But this morning we agreed that... We made another agreement. Ms. Travers felt she couldn't afford to turn down my offer. Could you? Did he offer you that much? I don't worry, Carl Hain. There'll be enough left to pay you off, even. That much? It's better this way, for all of us. Well, I don't blame you. I guess you won't be needing me around anymore, will you? I'll be collecting my gun if there are no objections, Gibson. Stop by the office on your way out of town. All right. Goodbye, Mrs. Travis. Oh, and good luck. <laughs> well, Marshal, I guess there's no reason to hold Moss and Zed any longer, is there? I guess not. Fine. Zed. You get back and keep your eye on the trail. I don't want anybody trespassing on my property. Moss, you stay. How about the boys' guns? Zed can have his. You'll get yours, Moss, when you cross the town line. That's the law, isn't it, Mr. Pardee? I 
think you'd be safer in the marshal's office. What's the matter? Why are you still here? I don't have time to explain. I want to borrow your gun. No! Give it to me! Quiet. If they are shoot, why? All right, fella. Now you leave that rifle laying right where it is and come on in here. these men. Sit in that chair. Wrap your arms around behind it. Cover. Keep them quiet. That's far enough. I've already met your rifleman. in a courtroom. I have an idea he'd still have lost. Yeah, but not so permanently. It's very quiet. Town needs people to live. They'll be coming back. Then maybe you'll need a lawyer here. That is, if there's someone around to enforce the law. With your kind of gun wrangling, there better be. You staying? I'm staying. <laughs>